I'm with the Chief Minister, Friday morning, and uh, we're kind of picking up from the SAVE initiative. All around this building are big signs on all the doors, I noticed, and mm -hmm. that's all part yeah. of it, isn't it? Yeah, that's so right. It's not just the public, it's, the, it's the, all, all the civil servants, yeah. all, all our government employees too. I mean, I've, have, I've had a look at the site, yeah. and you've got, I call the usual suspects, I suppose, mm -hmm. stuff that you know already. I mean, has anything thrown, been thrown up that you were gone, oh, that really is different, it was worth telling the public or asking the public to contribute, I mean... Well, we won't know that yet, Paul, until I think the closing date is the 14th of May. But just in the first three days, we've had 187 ideas from members of the public. Which I'm really pleasantly surprised that we've had that many from the public. And, of course, not all of them are going to be runners, but even if you get 10 20% that really work well, then there's, there's a saving out there. Now, I think David Ashford, MHK, is holding a sort of a save drop-in session and then we're going to have them scattered around the Isle of Man. He's doing the first one in Castletown um, Public Hall or, or, or mm -hmm. Library. I think it's um, between 12 and 3 o'clock a week on Thursday. So people actually go in, because obviously this is by email, so it's going to be, I mean, there's lots saying get rid of MHKs or MLCs, <laughs> yeah. you know, the usual things. Yeah. But, but, I mean, seriously, you, you, you've got to find how much again? 25 we, we, million? We've got to find 25 million, but... I mean, some of that 25 million can be the easiest ways to grow the economy. That's why I've been putting so much focus on, yeah. you know, trying to get our economy um, growing even faster than it has been. But savings have to be made. That's probably what got me into politics. We've lost a third of our income and everyone goes, oh, do, do, don't, don't raise the VAT thing again. But you lose a third of your net income overnight. That There's some serious issues that you've got to address there. So, yes, the easiest way is growing the economy. But one of the simple ideas which I, you know, that we've had in so far is from Castle Russian High School. The radiators are pumping out all the time. It's far too hot. Why don't we... Um, put some thermostatic controls on these radiators to mm. tur turn the heat down, which will save on the heating costs. And, you know, if that saved a couple of thousand a year, well, you, you know, uh, if you've got another 50 ideas, that's a hundred thousand pounds. Doesn't, doesn't government have a day for switching on heating in buildings and another day for switching off regardless of the weather? I mean, those, those sort of things, yeah. do they exist? Well, 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 these sort of things well, 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 can be looked at. So more, if it's yeah. sunny, don't turn it on. I mean, so so that's, a, that's a really simple idea, which yeah. I'm sure all, all your listeners will, will, will get as, as yeah. being common sense. And of course, as I say, some of them aren't, aren't going to be doable, but equally, Politicians aren't experts, and neither are the civil servants and everything. The, the general public pay for these services through their taxes, and I think it's only right that they, they come to us you know, with, with their feedback and ideas on where savings can be made. They're at the coalface, not, not, not myself or, or other politicians. Are you going to move out of those things that governments maybe shouldn't be running? Um, uh, uh, the the wildlife park, a cinema, a radio station, or, you know, paper, those sort of things. Are those high on your list that you shouldn't be involved in, or do you think you've still got to carry on? Well, I, I think let's not prejudge what comes forward. And middle of May, we'll assess, council of ministers will assess right. all, all the ideas, and we'll come forward okay. with, with the changes. Let's talk about MLCs. Yeah. You've already put your weight behind one person. Uh, that's going to be standing Yeah, I, I haven't proposed or seconded no, but them, but I've... Yeah. It was indicated that you were quite happy with that choice. Yeah. Um, what, obviously more than one, I think I've heard other names already, but uh, what do you think about, first of all, the changes to the rules? I, I think they're eminently sensible. I, I think I was elected with a, you know, a, a public vote or, uh, you, you know, um, not, not, a, not, not a private vote. Mm. I think that's what's going to happen with MLCs now. That's got to be a good way forward, that the, the people like to see what's going on. And anything that can do to speed up the process has got to be better. I know before I was in politics, I remember thinking to myself, you know, the Isle of Man is really being brought into disrepute here when you, you had months and months of trying to find an MLC and numerous votes and the horse well, trading. It's farcical, was wasn't it? It was farcical, but and therefore anything that improves that situation has got to be good. With you throwing your, your support behind this, gentleman, uh, this lady, sorry, um, yeah. who's outside of politics, is, yeah. is that your view on the matter? It shouldn't be a retirement home, to use that phrase, for... Yeah. MHKs or bringing back people who have been voted out by the public on the vote but then can come back in as an MLC. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm, I'm throwing my um, support behind um, a lady who happens to be in my constituency because I think she'd be good for the job. She's got a lot of skills and but that doesn't mean to say that there's not um, MHKs who would make a good job in the future. I don't think the House of Keys should be 100% ex-MHKs, retirement homes as some people want to call it, but equally I don't think it should be 100% members of the public who have no um, previous political experience. I, I know as, as a new MHK, 
I, I mentioned Eddie Lowy as an example. He'd been in, in Timwald for, since, I don't know, Methuselah sort of thing, yeah. 30 years. And he knew where all the skeletons were buried. He knew where the problems had been caused, how we'd got ourselves in a certain situation. And you were able to go and speak to him and get the, the background, the history. And that really, I found that really helpful but when, it, when making yes. decisions. But you could, you could get that information in, well, regardless not, if he was an MLC. Not, not, not necessarily. Should an um, you know, if they've been voted out by the public at the election, should they then have that sort of back door back into politics? Well, I, I suppose it depends on the individual, doesn't it? It's, it's a very rare thing. It happened with Claire Christian, who, who was just retired as a president, who did you know, yeah. five years, very good president for the Isle of Man. So I, I think it really is down to the individual. At the end of the day, a politician, a very good politician, can lose their seat for standing by their principles, doing what's right for the Isle of Man in the long term, but isn't always necessarily popular okay. in, in the short term.